Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Savant Report podcast. I'm Jordan Weirs, and today we're going to talk about I told you so. Okay, maybe not. That's a really bad attempt at humor. Uh, this is a very ominous situation that we're going to talk about today. A very sad one. Celsius officially filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. And unfortunately, I had the opportunity to warn a lot of you here just a, a couple few months ago. I think it was April 28th. I posted a video about my experiences with Celsius and I warned everybody to get out and to take their money off the platform. Um, you, you know, I gave the information as I got it. And unfortunately, there were a lot of people who didn't heed the warnings. There were also a lot of people who did heed the warnings. And I had some, uh, you know, people message me and say, thank you. I saved, uh, you know, some people a lot of money that they would have lost or that would have been tied up for perhaps many years. And um, I'm grateful for that opportunity. I'm just very sad for those who are going to have to suffer through a very difficult time here uh, working through the bankruptcy proceedings of Celsius Networks. So let's jump into uh, the topic and uh, talk about what this means for investors. So headline here um, on Coindesk, Celsius Network files for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Um, I want to talk about what Chapter 11 bankruptcy is. There's a lot of misconceptions and a lot of misinformation going around uh, the internet and crypto Twitter right now. Chapter 11 bankruptcy uh, is a chapter that you can file bankruptcy. It's a chapter of the bankruptcy code that allows for what's called reorganization. And people are saying, well, hey, this means that Celsius is going to continue to operate or that they're going to come out of this bankruptcy and ultimately they're going to continue on as a company and everything's going to be okay. That is unfortunately not the case. Um, there is a tiny, minuscule chance, in fact, I would say the chance is less than zero, that Celsius actually emerges from this bankruptcy and has um, any shot at continuing on its business operations. Um, a lot of companies that file for Chapter 11, uh, restructuring or reorganization, ultimately end up converting to a liquidation bankruptcy. But there's some reasons why, strategically, they don't do that to start with. Um, you know, this article goes on um, to talk about, uh, let's see, let me find the quote here. The company has filed motions with the court to allow it to continue in uh, operating in the normal course so that it can pay employees and continue uh, benefits. So let me tell you why this is important for investors. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there probably saying, hey, they're using my money to pay their employees and that's wrong. They should just fire everybody. No, that's not, not what should happen. In fact, that would be the worst possible thing that can happen. You need this company to continue to operate so that they can figure out um, how to unwind this rat's nest of financial transactions that's happening. I mean, Celsius had assets all over the place, some very, very complex financial instruments. Um, you need a staff, maybe a skeleton crew, but you still need a staff that can help unwind and unravel the financial dealings of Celsius. Now, keep in mind, this company at one point in time had about $25 billion of assets under management. The last published numbers that I saw uh, prior to them shutting down withdrawals were about $10 billion of investor assets. That's not a situation where you want every employee in the company to just you know, get fired and walk away. No, quite the contrary. You want them to stay and you want them to help unravel and unwind and strategically, you know, get those assets from wherever they are back into a position and in the hands of a bankruptcy trustee uh, so that they can, uh, you know, ultimately recover as much money as possible and distribute that to the investors who are ultimately going to come out losing on this. But the the better that they can unravel this rat's, this rat's nest, the higher probability of the higher dollar amounts coming back to investors. Now, uh, as part of the headline, it says the crypto lender said it has $167 million of cash on hand and will continue to freeze customer withdrawals. Now, there's other people out there saying, hey, if they have $167 million of cash, why aren't they giving that to people who need money who were frozen on the platform? 
Well, they need that cash to operate their business. They're going to have to make payroll. They're going to have to pay bankruptcy attorneys. There's going to be a lot of back and forth in court, many motions filed. Um, they're going to have to pay consultants. They're going to have to get audits. I mean, there's like there's a lot uh, that is going to have to go into this. It is not a small task to unwind $10 billion of financial dealings. So uh, let's also put that into perspective. 167 million out of 10 billion is roughly 1.67% of assets. So if they took 1.67% of the total assets under management and gave that pro rata percentage back to each investor, it would be almost meaningless. Now, I know that there's some people that had their whole life savings uh, and maybe that 1.67% of their assets would actually be meaningful. But uh, by them using that money to operate in the normal course, as they, as they say, um, it, trying to unwind this mess, uh, it's actually money pretty well spent. So uh, let's dive into a couple of other little things here in the article that I think are worthwhile pointing out. Um, I will tell you that um, you know this is not going to be a quick process. Um, there is a lot that is going to have to go on for the next couple of years. This is not going to be a quick unwind. Um, you're going to have to be patient. Uh, you're not weeks or months away from getting your funds back. You're probably a year or two away at best at just starting to receive a percentage of, um, of your assets back. So it says, uh, this article from uh, Washington Post says, hope for depositors dwindles as crypto lender Celsius files for bankruptcy. Uh, it goes on to detail a few interesting things, um, one of which I found super interesting. It says, Celsius is believed to have more than 500,000 depositors. Um, let's put that into perspective. At one point, Celsius claimed that they had 1.7 million customers. Well, now they're saying 500,000. I don't know where they got that number from. It could have been from the bankruptcy filings themselves. Um, but if that's the case, that means that, you know, effectively they lost almost three quarters of their depositor base and investor base. Uh, it says, among the unsecured creditors, it said in its petition, were an investment firm based in the Cayman Islands, to which it owes nearly $300 million dollars. Um, that could be any number of firms, one of which could be Tether. Uh, another one, I can think of a couple crypto companies that are based out of the Cayman Islands or that have a domicile there in one form or fashion. It also says that they owe a digital marketing firm more than 13 million and a digital trading firm, which it owns, uh, owes, uh, 12.7 million. So they probably didn't pay their marketing bill, pretty big marketing bill of $13 million for some period of time. Um, you know, I think that there's going to be a lot of scrutiny here. People are going to be looking and scrutinizing the financial dealings of Alex Mashinsky. There's going to be forensic auditors that are going to go in and try and find out where the trail of money went. And, you know, is there any possibility that payments made to companies or any of these creditors uh, are actually shell companies for Alex Mashinsky, for his wife? We do know that Alex Mashinsky had given his wife a lot of assets uh, you know, pretty typical scenario over the years uh, is that people uh, who do really bad things will take a whole lot of money, they'll give them to their spouse, they'll then get divorced and act like they uh, are separated, and then that spouse hypothetically is protected, at least in some jurisdictions, and that spouse's assets, and so you have the guilty spouse giving to the innocent spouse, kind of separating assets, kind of creating a firewall, so to speak, uh, between uh, them and the illicit activities. So, you know, lots going to be going on. Uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, scrutiny here with how this is unwound and what the dealings were. We do know uh, this. We do know, and there have there have been a lot of on-chain guys watching this happen. Celsius Network has been making some pretty big financial moves over the last few weeks, even since they have paused withdrawals from their uh, from their investors and their account holders. Uh, they've been paying down margin loans on Bitcoin. They've probably made a few other uh, payments to certain creditors. And there's a lot of reasons why they could do that, one of which was maybe Alex Mashinsky uh, had personally guaranteed some debt and he wants to pay those off before he files bankruptcy. 
to try and protect himself. Although at the end of this, I think Alex Mashinsky is going to face tons of lawsuits. Uh, would surprise me if it's not any less than several dozen from investors and account holders alleging everything from fraud to misrepresentation and, and you know, the, the whole gamut. Um, but he might be trying to protect himself. He also might have some interesting relationships or maybe some deep relationships with some of those creditors that he wanted to make sure he took care of. Uh, they might be senior creditors. Uh, there's a whole bunch of reasons why they could be making those financial moves. But at the end of the day, it's now in a frozen condition and any move that they make is going to have to be approved by the bankruptcy court. And that's really what bankruptcy does is it kind of freezes everything. So you could file a lawsuit against uh, Celsius Networks right now, and ultimately at the end of the day, um, that would go before the bankruptcy judge and determine whether or not it has merit, what the value of the claim is, and uh, whether or not that lawsuit could even, even move forward. So um, lots going to be happening here in the near future. Now, Celsius did put out a statement themselves. Uh, they actually tweeted it. And unfortunately, I can't show you the tweet because Alex Mashinsky and Celsius Networks, both of their Twitter accounts, blocked me when I was asking them questions and confronting them about hard topics on Twitter. So unfortunately, I can't show you their tweets because they've blocked me. I can show you a tweet that um, that I posted just yesterday. Uh, I'm, <laughs> Ironically enough, they can block me on Twitter, but my email address is still in their system as a potential customer. And so they sent me the same update that they sent everybody else, which was moments ago, we announced that Celsius voluntarily filed petitions for chapter 11 reorganization. Here you will be able to find the official announcement. Uh, today's filing follows the difficult but necessary decision by Celsius last month to pause withdrawals, swap and transfers on its platform to stabilize its business and protect its customers. Without a pause, the acceleration of withdrawals would have allowed certain customers, those who were first to act, to be paid in full while leaving others behind to wait for the Celsius, uh, to wait for Celsius to harvest value from a liquid and longer term asset deployment activities before they received recovery. So basically what he's saying is, is that uh, the run on the bank, so to speak, was so vast and so big and so fast that uh, they were going to be out of money and maybe they were actually run out of money and uh, they couldn't redeem anybody else because it would prejudice those who were on the platform versus those who just clicked withdraw and actually got their money off the platform. So they were basically saying, look, at this point, uh, when we paused, we knew we were bankrupt. We knew our assets and our liquidity uh, were less than what we actually owed investors and could afford to redeem. And so they just wanted to kind of stop everything and have an even playing field. Now, there's a lot of signs that there was something wrong. I want to talk about those a little bit. Uh, one of the signs was that all of a sudden, people got put in what was called a HODL mode, okay? And so HODL mode was um, a feature of the Celsius network um, uh, platform that it was originally intended that if there was any suspicious activity that they would basically stop all withdrawals out of your account until you could prove that it was actually you wanting the withdraw, basically trying to protect from hackers and illicit activity. Uh, that has always been a feature, and typically it was something that the user could turn on. All of a sudden, people started getting automatically put into HODL mode, and they couldn't remove their assets from the platform, withdraw their assets from the platform, and so they would have to supply a whole bunch of documentation, you know, talk to several different departments inside Celsius, and people, some people got it unlocked and some people couldn't get it unlocked. There was a lot of frustration. But that was the first sign that the inner workings of Celsius was really, really on the rocks. I mean, in fact, on the rocks is maybe an understatement. I would say on the cliff. Um, they were pausing withdrawals involuntarily before they even announced that they were going to pause formal withdrawals. They were basically trying to keep as many assets on the platform as possible. 
Uh, this, the Alex Mashinsky, the CEO of Celsius, did a really good job, you know, trying to quell fears, talk to people, restore reason. Um, you know, he would do these uh, Twitter AMAs and YouTube AMAs live, and he would talk about a very narrow, specific set of information and would ignore a lot of the elephants in the room. And a lot of the things that he was saying, and more importantly, a lot of the things he wasn't saying were raising red flags. Now, for a moment, I want to talk about this video that I did on April 28th, 2022. I have been in the real estate business for 22 years. I've got a pretty substantial uh, amount of history behind me doing deals. Uh, I've dealt with a lot of shady characters over the years. Uh, unfortunately, they're in every industry. Certainly, they're in real estate. And I've had to sniff out those shady characters. I've had to learn sometimes the hard way and other times learn, um, you know, just by my intuitive sense uh, and using common sense and using the experience that I have um, to sniff out people and organizations that aren't on the up and up. And generally speaking, I have a really good track record of doing that. Um, you know, just because I'm a deal guy by nature, I kind of understand uh, how things work from a deal perspective and finance perspective. And so I can see through a lot of things. I'm not going to say I can see through everything, but I can see through a lot of things. I had a call with an institutional account manager with Celsius, and what he told me was so unnerving that um, I felt compelled to warn the general public. And so I came out very outspoken against Celsius, and it you know, it was a risk for me to do at the time. Um, you know, it's it's always hard and it's always risky coming out uh, publicly to speak out against another company, especially a multi-billion dollar company. And, um, and I felt compelled to do that because I wanted to save people uh, their hard-earned money, their assets, their life savings. And a lot of people listened. I was able to uh, save one guy over a million dollars, uh, another person, uh, you know, several hundred thousand, and come to find out just from word of mouth, uh, from me talking to other people that I know about Celsius and about what I thought was happening, that a lot of people were able to pull their assets and, and save themselves. I will say Celsius created a very cult-like environment around this Celsian community, I would be on Twitter and people would light me up and they'd get on my YouTube and leave me nasty comments about, you know, someone must be paying me to talk bad about Celsius and, um, and that I don't know what I'm talking about and Celsius is the best thing ever. And, um, you know, I had people threaten legal action against me saying Celsius is going to sue you because, uh, you're speaking out, you know, against them and you don't know what you're talking about. Look, I take no pleasure here we are a few months later, I take no pleasure in being right. Uh, I'm very saddened for all the people losing money. Uh, this was their life savings for a lot of people. And, um, you know, this is not a fun thing to have to go through. And it's not going to be easy for a lot of those people that didn't take their money off of the Celsius platform. So, um, you know, I wanted to say that I wanted to get that out there. Um, you know, I started this podcast with a little bit of satire. Haha, -ha, I told you so really like this is just a bad situation for everyone around. My commitment to this channel is unwavering. I want to use this channel and my platform uh, that I've been given to create very relevant content that makes people think and that makes them make better investment decisions. You know, in 22 years, um, I've learned a lot of things the hard way. And I've also been smart enough to learn things the easy way. I've learned from other people's mistakes. And I want to encourage you to do that as well. If you didn't have money on the Celsius uh, network platform, good for you. If you had money and you took it off when there were warning signs, good for you. Um, learn those lessons from other people's mistakes. Don't always insist on making them yourself. So thank you so much for watching. I'm just going to ask if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to my channel. If you give me a thumbs up and hit that bell so you get notifications, it helps the algorithm with YouTube. I'm still trying to grow this platform. I'm very humbled by all of you who have subscribed and taken the time to watch my content. Uh, I promise you I'm going to continue to do the very best job that I can. And if you haven't signed up to my newsletter, it's a free newsletter. You can subscribe at savantreport.com. There is a link to that in the description below. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Jordan Weirs on Twitter. Thanks, everybody. I hope you have a good one. And hopefully you didn't have money on the Celsius Network platform. Take care.